By reclaiming the ways of their ancestors, Shoal Lake No. 40 First Nation residents are developing a new way of governing, one based on traditional ideas of community consultation. It has inspired a united front and has led to direct action focused on those who took away their clean water and road access 100 years ago. In 2007, we decided to walk from our First Nation to, to the city of Winnipeg. To tell the world, basically, you know, we're only 20 minutes from the main highway. We don't even have a road. The protest march, which band members dub Freedom Road, is a week-long trek that culminates at the site of what will be the new Canadian Human Rights Museum in downtown Winnipeg. Our position was, how can you talk about spending millions and millions of dollars on a museum for human rights when we're being denied basic human rights right here? Canada was the one that took our best land that we had to, and getting granted to the city of Winnipeg for their water. That's what the march was about. It was about Canada giving us what we need, which is all the way to secure access to our community. We have a water treatment plant that's been sitting on a table to be started. We can't because we don't have a road. So many things that we are unable to do because we don't have road access. To give us a road, you know, that will that will help us uh, be a little more accessible and see more uh, opportunities in the economic development uh, area for our people to be employed and for um, more businesses to arise uh, that could employ our people. The protest march is successful and it convinces the city of Winnipeg and the province of Manitoba to help Shoal Lake Band construct a winter road. It's a 28-kilometer trail through the forest that provides only winter access for now. The goal is to eventually convert this into a permanent road to be used year-round. This gathering, this historic day, Shemilech. Well, again, I want to welcome everybody. It's a chilly fall afternoon when Shoal Lake Band members gather for an honor ceremony. This is about getting home safely, like everybody else in Canada. This is about equal opportunity, access to job opportunities, access to employment. This is what we're celebrating today. You know, for 100 years we've been denied access to our community and this is the first step connecting our Winter Road project to the Trans-Canada Highway. We have our partners here with us, the City of Winnipeg, the Province of Manitoba, the Royal Municipality of Reynolds, celebrating and honoring you, the one that walked those miles. The population of Winnipeg has benefited since 1916 from having a secure and clean water supply. I think it's time for the main population to get with it, put some money in, and if it's in the range from what I'm hearing for the 28 kilometer road, permanent now, uh, of, of 25 to 30 million dollars, then I think that money should be found. And I think we should have a goal to have that road open within two, three, four years maximum. But let's uh, ante up to the plate. I think it's owed to this First Nation. To the citizens of Winnipeg, I would say every time you turn on your tap, you should be grateful for this community. The financial reality, of course, is that it will take more than gratitude to build a permanent road. I think you're going to have to see a partnership between the federal government and the city of Winnipeg and the province and any other private partners that have an interest. It just reminded me of the, the walk that, we, that took place a few years ago. It's just everybody came together as one and with a common goal and embraced one another. Everybody partnering and being part of this whole process. So it was a really powerful day, historic day for us. For Show Lake No. 40 First Nation, it's the traditional ways of their ancestors that have brought them success so far defining their community and inspiring a united front. The band is now determined to stay true to their communal roots in their continuing fight for road access and for clean running water.
We drank this water all our lives, you know. It didn't hurt anyone. It was clear. Not worry about bacteria. It was uh, very safe for drinking. Our traditions and our, our, our culture and understanding of water is sacred to us and it's life. <laughs>